For people who aren't from this part of the world, the history of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, plus the history of Ireland, the island of Ireland, which contains two islands, it is extremely tough to get your head around, of course, for people who aren't from this region and for the people who are from it as well. I mean, the UK right now, um, from when I'm talking here in 2022, is a country made up essentially of four countries. And then of course you have Ireland, which is a whole completely different conversation within itself. The history of Ireland can be quite complicated and this is a football channel. So in this video, we will be investigating why the island of Ireland has two footballing nations, two footballing leagues, and two footballing cup competitions as well. People who know me and know my channel know that I just wanna look at things from a football standpoint, but today I'm gonna to have to talk about the history of Ireland and I wanna do it as best I can. I know there are a few sensitive sub subjects in there. I've researched the history of Ireland as best I can and I will be talking about a few issues and a few things that have happened historically about why there is a island in the south and an island in the north as well and how that all relates to the football in the modern day. Please do hit that like button, please do subscribe if you're new, time to leave the studio here in Scotland, get on a boat and head to Belfast. this we're on the ferry I'm not sure if I've ever took you on a ferry before on the vlogs I've certainly not driven you onto a ferry for the vlogs we've done a lot of traveling been on a lot of planes trains cars coaches but today it's the ferry right gotta try and remember where we are blue stairs let's go Wow, it's pretty exciting, a little bit windy, but I've never been ground hopping on a boat before. This is a journey that I've wanted to do for a very, very long time, ever since I know you can get the boat from near Stranra in Scotland all the way across to Belfast. Here we go, look. The capital of Northern Ireland, Belfast. And like I've said, it's very, very confusing being from the United Kingdom or even from Ireland or Northern Ireland or Wales or Scotland or England, wherever you're from, within this section of the world. It can get extremely confusing. Let me show you through my passport, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Again, how confusing must it be from people? I think Great Britain is Scotland, England and Wales, but the UK includes Northern Ireland in that as well. And then of course in the island of Ireland, you have Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. It gets really, really confusing. And the history of our nations um, goes back thousands of years and why it is like this now and again you sort of need to know this this gives you context about why the football teams and why the football nations are split as well around a thousand years ago the Normans invaded England from France and took over the throne they later decided to invade Ireland and Henry II created the Lordship of Ireland he was also the King of England at the time and that is essentially what started off centuries of English and later British rule within Ireland. Around 500 years ago, Henry VIII was then King of England. He took over Ireland and it was no longer known as the Lordship of Ireland, but the Kingdom of Ireland. Henry VIII changed things um, for this country that even still has um, big ramifications to this day. He started the Church of England. He went away from um, the papal runnings of sort of Europe. The Pope wouldn't grant him permission to divorce one of his wives. Obviously he loved having 
multiple wives, he wasn't allowed to divorce them, which is why he came up with the Church of England and thus Protestantism within Britain. That period of British history is known as the Protestant Reformation. But despite the rise of Protestantism across Europe, Ireland remained mainly Catholic. Something called the Plantation of Ulster happened during 1609, which was the reign of James I. He sent settlers from Scotland and England to settle northern parts of Ireland. Down the centuries, there was numerous wars, changes between kings and queens and ideologies. In 1707, the Acts of Union joined Scotland and England together, and that created the Kingdom of Great Britain. In 1798, there was a rebellion from Ireland against British rule. Then in 1801, Ireland joined Great Britain to become Great Britain and Ireland. Remember my passport? It said the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Well, if this video was being filmed in 1801 to 1922, if I'd have even needed a passport then, it would have said Great Britain and Ireland. In 1886, though, the Irish Home Rule Bill was proposed and it was finally passed in 1914, but World War I put a stop to that. And I would implore you to look into this a lot more. I just want to give you a little bit of context about the history of Ireland so that it gives you a little bit more relevance when we talk about the football later on. There was the 1916 Easter Rising, then there was the 1919 to 1921 War of Independence. In the 1920s, Northern Ireland was partitioned away from the rest of Ireland, and this was supposed to be a temporary split just to appease the sort of two sides. Then the Irish Civil War even began after the War of Independence. There was a War of Independence and then the Irish Civil War, right back to back basically. Then there was the Irish referendum in 1937 to remove all British ties from the Irish Constitution, which eventually really led to the Troubles as they were known of course between 1960, the 1960s and the 1990s. Thanks to the Good Friday Agreement in 1998, a ceasefire was agreed upon. Yeah, it's a really, really sort of sensitive subject in a lot of ways and I just wanted to give you a little bit of context around the history of Ireland. Like I said, Say, do look into it a little bit more yourselves. Let's go and have a little look around the ferry before we land in Belfast. I'd like to welcome you all on board. We've just completed loading and we're securing the vessel for sea. Very shortly, we'll be leaving the berth. Our ETA into Belfast will be round about. Uh, was actually really really nice you would have seen some of the clips in there but it's time to get back in the car I don't know how I'm gonna uh, work my way out of this little sticky situation here but yeah trying to get back into the car and head in to Belfast there's some stuff that I've really really wanted to see in the city for a long time and then I'm going to tell you about why there are two different nations in terms of football two different completely league systems and two completely different cup competitions and systems and stuff like that as well it's gonna be interesting let's go Wow, this is absolutely fascinating. I've wanted to come here for all of my life. And look, this is one of the dividing walls, one of the peace lines dividing the two communities of Belfast, the Catholic side and the Protestant side. Let's go over and have a closer look. In the Shankill area, right, I believe, here's something to do with the Titanic, the industrial legacy. Look at this. So fascinating, you usually think of Partition walls being a part of like the Berlin Wall, that's what most people would think about. But obviously there's one here right in the UK. Um, here in Northern Ireland, of course. Look at this. Not only are there physical divides between parts of the city of Belfast, there's also a divide in the football. There used to be one 
Irish Football Association, and that eventually became two, the IFA and the FAI. World War I caused a united League of Ireland to become split in two, centered around main population areas of Belfast and Dublin. The Irish War of Independence and the Irish Civil War followed, but the cup competitions remained all Ireland affairs. Yeah, the FAI, the sort of Irish, or Republic of Irish um, Football Association was formed around 1921, the same time that the Irish Free State um, was sort of born, I suppose you could say. Um, so yes, yeah, absolutely mad how um, obviously things within politics and within the world of Ireland changed football here completely. We've just passed the Peace Wall. Uh, we're driving towards Windsor Park now, the National Stadium, where we'll get there and I'll tell you a few of the little differences between the two league systems, the two national teams, the two cup competitions. But it's incredible just driving from one side to the other within a few seconds, you see a huge difference in literally just the colour of buildings and the flags in people's houses and stuff. And again, I find it super fascinating seeing like the, the split between these parts of the city of Belfast and look right now look at this gate that we've just passed through I imagine this used to get closed off and so did that piece over there and this would have been like a bit of separation between the Protestant side down there and the Catholic side down here let's just look at some of the differences look here we go we are passing into the Catholic side of Belfast right now and there's I've seen loads of tourists just walking up and down. Wipe the lens here for you. Loads of tourists walking up and down, taking pictures of the wall and stuff. Again, you think of the Berlin Wall, don't you? You don't necessarily think of this being in, uh, being so close to home. But let's have a look, here we go. Loads of murals depicting parts of the Catholic side of things. Community Rescue Service, as well as other things that obviously mean so much to this side of the city. And then if we take just the short walk back through the gates, I will show you what the Protestant side looks like. In understanding all walls shall fall down. I have read online that there is plans, or there have been plans at least, to eventually bring all the walls down. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if those plans will go ahead. Let me know in the comments if, uh, if you know anything. And then here we go, look back through the other side and straight away, look, you can see British flags and symbols of what are now Northern Ireland and the Protestant side of the Christian faith. Look, here we go. The poppy as well. You walk from one side, which is all sort of green, white and orange and you come to the other side which is blue, white and red. It is absolutely intriguing to me that this city is split like this and it's somewhere, somewhere I've always wanted to see. And I've had loads of requests from you guys to come here and again I'm not saying I'm an expert in any of these issues and any of these topics and stuff. I wish I knew more about it than what I did. I just find it incredible how you can walk from one to the other and it's so split like this. Sad, of course, really devastating that it's split and of course all the, all the awful things that have happened down the years in this city, but still an incredible place of history here within the United Kingdom. We're about a two minute drive right now from Windsor Park, but let me just show you this. Look at that the flag of three saints. The Union flag tells the history of the United Kingdom, three flags united as one. The current design dates from 1801 following the act of union between Great Britain and Ireland. St Andrew's Cross, St George's Cross and St Patrick's Cross make what is the Union Jack flag. St Patrick's Cross is a red saltire X-shaped cross on a white field used to represent St Patrick. The association with St. Patrick dates back from the 1780s when the Order of St. Patrick adopted it as, its, as an emblem. Wow, you drive around the city and there is just so many murals and like bits of interest to see and little pieces of information, bits of history, flags, etc. Who's that supposed to be? George Best? It doesn't actually say anywhere. I imagine it would be if it's number seven. 
And of course, this isn't only home to the Northern Irish national team, but Linfield Football Club play here as well. That is Northern Ireland's most successful club team as well. I purposely didn't get in contact with Linfield or the Northern Irish FA or the people who run Windsor Park today because I'm actually coming for a game against St Mirren, Linfield v St Mirren um, in a few days where they're gonna give me a bit of a tour of the stadium first. I can't get in today, they have tours on specific days and today isn't even one of the days that the actual tours are running so I wouldn't have been able to show you but just met one of the uh, uh, security guys here um, on the door of the stadium, really, really nice guy and uh, he said I could just walk around. There should be a shop around here, I think, as well. A lot of the branding of the place is Northern Irish, but also Linfield, of course, is completely um, shared between two. I'm not sure who actually owns the stadium, whether it's Linfield or whether it's uh, the Northern Irish FA, or the IFA, I think it is, of course, but you know, Windsor Park, the home of Linfield Football Club. And may I add, Linfield had the most league titles in the world. It used to be Rangers, unless there's some team from Mauritius or something that no one knows about who have won like 60 league titles. Linfield have won 56 league titles, Rangers of course 55, and so that makes Linfield the most successful team in the world in terms of league titles. I certainly remember this. David Healy, wasn't he top scorer of the Euro qualifiers one of the years. I'm gonna be doing a lot more detail about this man. So I believe he is the current Linfield manager, but of course he scored a goal to beat England. Look at Ashley Cole. He is thinking, no way. Healy's put one past Paul Robinson. And then look, he even scored a hat trick for Northern Ireland against Spain. Wow. Yeah, look, he's now the manager of Linfield, who have had a huge amount of success. So look at that, 1921-22. The season the club won all seven of their domestic competitions that they entered. Just check this out, look, Satanta and clean sweep. Right, so what is the Satanta Cup? Irish league clubs competed against those from the League of Ireland for the Satanta Sports Cup. Irish league clubs, uh, clubs from Northern Ireland, such as Linfield, League of Ireland clubs are the ones from the Republic of Ireland, a lot of the ones that I covered down in Dublin recently, such as Shamrock Rovers and Shelburne, for instance. In May 2005, Linfield defeated Shelburne, there you go, 2-0, in the final in Dublin with goals from Glenn Ferguson and Peter Thompson. And this here is the Irish Cup, and this used to be contested between all the teams within the island of Ireland before the Irish Free State in the early 1920s. Um, and all the sort of battles for independence and the civil wars and all that kind of stuff. Every team in Ireland competed for this cup here, which is still competed for by the teams in Northern Ireland, such as Linfield, who have won it 44 times according to this. It also says 55 league titles, but it's now 56. Um, but yeah, there was a time, I don't think the Satanta Sports Cup is around anymore, the Satanta Cup is around anymore, but it was made to have an inter-island competition where teams from both Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland would play against each other a little bit like they would have done in the olden days. What I found mega confusing about this video is trying to find out what the Irish teams from the League of Ireland, the teams that compete in the Republic of Ireland, you know, the Shamrock Rovers and all that, what were they doing before the sort of split and pre you know, the IFA splitting into two and becoming two sort of football associations. And that Irish Cup I just showed you, obviously I told you that all the teams within Ireland used to compete in that cup competition. And for instance, it's interesting, right? So I've seen here that Shelburne have won the Irish Cup three times. That is now the Cup of Northern Ireland. They're a Dublin-based team, but they've also won the FAI Cup, which was obviously established a lot later 
seven times. So they've competed in both and they've won both. And so have Bohemian. They won the Irish Cup once and the FAI Cup seven times. So um, yeah, it's incredibly confusing trying to find out what leagues everybody was playing in and what cup competitions they were playing and what they're playing in now and the split and what happened when. And it's been a genuine nightmare trying to investigate and trying to research all these topics. Also, don't even get me started on Derry City FC. I know they are within Northern Ireland but they play in the League of Ireland. They didn't have a league for a number of years after the split. And they're also, well, they were the first country in history, uh, sorry, the first club in history to play in a UEFA competition representing two FAs. So they played when they were in the IFA in the European Cup. And then when they were in the FAI, I think they played in the European Cup as well. So they played in the UEFA Cup, uh, European Cup twice under two different FAs. The mind boggles. Again, it's incredibly hard to research. People from Ireland, I'm sure there's a lot of you out there who are much more knowledgeable on the subject than I am. I've got loads of videos planned where I'm gonna hopefully learn a lot more about these things. These videos are as much about me learning about these places as it is I hope for you. I have to look into these things, try and find the facts out, but sometimes I have to come here, investigate for myself, chat to a few people and I'll find out or read your comments. So let me know what the sort of other teams of Ireland were doing. From what I've seen, it looked like they were playing in more regionalized competitions, maybe the Leinster League, the Munster League, I think as well. I think there were more like regionalized competitions around that time. And now just look at the current league table of Northern Ireland. The season hasn't started yet. They have the same um, season timeline as we do in the UK, whereas the Republic of Ireland, if you didn't already know, have a summer season. So they're in the middle of their season, whereas as you can see right now, there have been no games played currently. But look at the, some of the teams in there. You've got Linfield, of course, who are the most successful, Glen Torren, who are a big side, Crusaders, Cliftonville, Dunnigan Swifts, Carrick Rangers, um, look, Larne, Portadown, Newry City. So there's a lot of teams in there who you may have heard of before, but um, yeah, look, a 12 team league. But if I now show you the Republic of Ireland League, the League of Ireland Premier Division. And again, I'm trying my best to use the right terminology. I know that there's some people that won't like it if I say Ireland in some situations, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland. I'm trying my best to um, to use the right terminology as and when I can. But yeah, the League of Ireland Premier League uh, Premier Division right now, you've got your Shamrock Rovers, your Dundalks, your Bohemians, your Sligo Rovers, your Derrys, of course, as I showed you earlier. Um, a few of them teams actually obviously played in the same league structure as Linfield back in the day and as the teams here in Northern Ireland, as well as competing in the Irish Cup, of course. So look, you can see now, of course, yeah, I've shown you like Shelburne, who have obviously won both cups and they are now in a division just within teams of the Republic of Ireland as well. So yeah, guys, people of Ireland, what do you think? Has it obviously weakened the national teams? Would you be better off having a national team of full Ireland where you have the whole island of Ireland to pick from of players? I believe there has also been a Champions Cup um, in recent years. I think it's been canceled due to COVID in the recent couple of seasons, um, but it's similar to the Satanta Cup, which was, um, obviously abandoned like I told you they don't play that anymore but it was a way in which these clubs could actually play together competitively again um, really sad seeing the split of Ireland for whatever reason whether you're from the Northern, Northern Ireland or whether you're from the Republic of Ireland whatever your thoughts are whatever side of the debate you fall it is really sad whenever anything like that happens. And to see it with the football as well, for me is sad. It obviously, a lot of these teams used to play against each other, um, but obviously doesn't happen anymore. Um, would they ever play each other in Europe? I'm, I'm not sure if they ever really would. Um, of course, the Linfield are playing TNS from Wales pretty soon. Um, there's other European ties going on within the whole island of Ireland. So yeah, it's a, it's a really complicated subject that even I'm just starting to get my head around. I made three videos within Dublin uh, earlier in the week or last week um, and now I'm here in Northern Ireland but I'll be flipping between the two I've got my car here um, as you saw earlier we got on the ferry so yeah loads of 
Irish videos planned from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. I'm going to cover loads and loads of teams. I really hope I've done my best here today. Well, I have tried my best. I hope you can see that and um, I hope you appreciate it. It's very, very hard to research a lot of these topics, um, the football topics and the history topics as well. Um, it is a really, really complicated subject that I'm literally just scratching the surface of in this video and I'm going to be covering loads of teams in loads more detail in the days to come. Please do remember to hit that like button. Please do subscribe if you're new. I'll leave some videos on screen right now. If you could click on one to carry on watching, that'd be amazing. Cheers, and I'll see you in the next one.